Hi guys. I miss you already, just so you know. I wanted to read a book to you. One of my um one of my kind of favorite books. This is by an author um who is who is local to the area. Her name is Sarah Stewart and her, the illustrations are by David Small and he's also local. But this book is called The Friend. Um and I want to read it to you. Okay, I'm going to take the book jacket off. You know how I like to do that. And this book was written, actually, I need to show you this one right here. She's got glasses like you, Wilhelm and Audrey. This book I even had um, signed. Oh, by a friend. There's the signatures of the author and the illustrator right there. <clears throat> I'm going to show you the picture as well as I can while I read. Annabelle Bernadette Clementine Dodd was a good little girl, though decidedly odd. Belle lived every day as if she were grown. She thought she could do everything all on her own. Now Belle had a very good friend in her home from whose sight she was seldom allowed to roam. In fact, on most days, they worked side by close side where Beatrice Smith was the kindest of guides. Belle's mother was busy, too busy to play and her father was much too often away. So hour after hour, day after day, Bell followed B with B leading the way. First day of the week, they'd wash all the clothes, hanging them out in the sun's fullest glow. Bell would assemble large clothes pins, bouquets, while B would respond in her singular ways. Glory be, Lord knows you try, my child. Now let those clothes just flap for a while. Then they'd walk to the beach for a swimming spree, Belle and Bee hand in hand to the sea. Second day of the week, they'd iron the shirts, trousers and hankies and blouses and shirts. So Belle would sprinkle the clothes and more, herself, the table, the rug, and the floor. Bead straighten, the, straighten up, look Belle in the eye. Let's give this place a chance to dry. Then they'd hike on the beach and make art in the sand, Belle and Bee by the sea, hand in hand. Third day of the week, they'd clean all the rooms. While Bee would dust, Belle danced with her broom. And when Belle and her broom went faster and faster, Bee was right there to ensure no disaster. She would stop and smile and study Belle's moves. Glory be, my child, your steps are so smooth. Then they'd prance to the beach, the treasure they'd seize. Belle and Bee, hand in hand by the sea. Fourth day of the week, they'd shop at the store and head to the garden for onions and more. Belle would dig worms and take them all home, where in spite of Bee's guard, they tended to roam. Hands on her hips, Bee'd make a strange face. All of God's creatures needed a safe place. <clears throat> then they'd go to the beach. Their castles were grand. Belle and Bee by the sea, hand in hand. Fifth 
day of the week, they'd bake some bread or roll out their favorite cookies instead. Belle was the artist and Bee was the baker. Their tasty results seemed to cover an acre. Bee turned from the stove and exclaim with pride, Glory be, my child! Beauty can't be denied! missed a word. I think I missed some. Gage, you got to tell me when I miss these things. Then they'd stroll to the beach and sit down for tea, Belle and Bee, hand in hand, by the sea. Sixth day of the week, they'd tackle big chores, washing the windows or scrubbing the floors, but they'd only work for half the day with songs and jokes along the way. When they'd finish, Bede'd say, come sit with me. We'll look out my window at the beautiful sea. Then they'd climb the back stairs to, the, to Bee's tiny rooms filled with birds and books and sweet smelling blooms. seventh day of the week was Belle was always Bee's guest. They went to Bee's church where, where Belle sang the best. And Bee would say on this most special day, Alleluia and glory be. I'm so lucky you're next to me. Then they'd sit in the garden and soak up the sun and give their thanks that the week's work was done. But the day came like many other days, except Belle snuck outside all alone to play. There was no one in sight, no one at all. So she picked up her enormous, her enormous red ball. Belle took her ball and walked straight to the sea. I'm the boss of myself. I'm the boss of me. Belle's ball bounced away and she ran in to save it. She felt strong and brave until a big wave hit. Back at home, home B turned. Where could Belle be? B ran to the sea. She ran fast to the sea. Dashed into the water in her apron and shoes. She knew she had absolutely no time to lose. In just a few strokes, splashing pell-mell, her arms were around the terrified Belle. And out the two came, Bell and friend, Bell and friend B, out the great, beautiful, big sea. The ball went on to where it wanted to be. B carried Bell toward the kitchen's warm stove and brought towels, hot chocolate, and cozy, clean clothes. Bell. All dry now and in a safe place, took a towel, took another towel and dried Bee's face and wanting most of all to cheer her up, gave Bee a hug and filled her cup. I'm so very, very sorry, Bee. I should have asked you to come with me. There was a good woman. I call her my friend. She's in my heart now. She took care of me then. This book has a little bit of a dedication at the end from the author, and it says... To all the people across the world who have saved the lives of children by paying attention when others did not, but especially to Ola B. 
Beatrice Smith, and that's from the author Sarah Stewart. This book, I believe, is a true story about when Sarah Stewart was, was young. It's based on the same story. And this is about the woman who not only took care of her house, but took care of her too. This woman was her friend and saved her life. And what I noticed about this, this story is that the, the woman, B, um, was a black woman who worked very hard um, and lived in B's home away from her family. I noticed that because there was a picture of um, maybe her children on a dresser. So some of the Maple Kids might remember one year that we did our classroom election and B was on the ballot because, you know, she's a hero of mine. She, I don't think is a fictional character. I think she was a real live person, but um, I think, you know, even, even though, even if she didn't have to save... Belle's life, um, she worked hard and she's, she's still a hero of mine. Anyway, I wanted to share this book with you called The Friend. Bye. Be good.